Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about optimizing production performance with MRG. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Takashi Kokuben and on the internet, uh, in the, like uh, GitHub and Twitter, I use the account ID Kokuben. And uh, I'm also working as a Ruby committer in my spare time, uh, primarily working on JIT compiler and maintaining ERB and also sometimes contributing to IRB for colorizing the output and introducing some useful commands. And I, I'm a software engineer at Treasury there. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, these four things. The first, I'm going to talk about what MRIGIT we have today. And after that, uh, talk about, talking about the, how to tune the JIT performance for Rails application, because Rails is a uh, for me, it's a production workload of the Ruby usages, personally. And then also talk about warming up, how we can warm up the MRIG performance to the peak performance. And lastly, I'll briefly discuss the future of MRIG. So the first section is about the MRIG introduction. First of all, we have now, three basically three kinds of um, JIT works going on right now. The first JIT implementation is called MJIT. MJIT is um, um, developed by a person called Vladimir Makarov, and uh, that was merged in Ruby, merged in Ruby two point six, and we have that until like uh, like today. And that's uh, off, off, that by default it's not enabled, and so we need to enable that by dash dash jit option. And the main characteristics of the MJIT is uh, it runs a C compiler to uh, generate a native code. So you have to prepare a C compiler at runtime to make the MJIT running correctly. And because it's the implemented with JIT C compiler, it can support GCC and Clan and Microsoft uh, Visual C++. So um, basically, as long as you use one of these C compilers, uh, that um, like wor works well, like it's supported, uh, like uh, it's it's a multi-platform implementation. However, these days Shopify is developing another JIT compiler implementation called YJIT, that's um, currently discussed to be merged in Ruby 3.1. I think uh, when you are looking at this uh, recording. Uh, that might be already merged. And that's optionally, uh, also planned to be optionally enabled by dash dash YJIT option. And unlike MJIT, it uses an uh, in-process x86 assembler, so you don't need to see the uh, processes uh, under the uh, Ruby process. And also, because MJIT uh, is slow because of the C compiler uh, process execution, um, Widget has more uh, earlier or like a quicker warm up because of the uh, JIT compilation performance. Lastly, we also hear some words or like a name about uh, MIR. So the MIR or also known as MIR, MIR is called uh, like a JIT framework um, that, uh, that was originally motivated by or like a, also created by the same person, so same author as the MJIT. So MJIT, as you, as I already explained, is working by running a C compiler, but running a C compiler for each um, JIT compilation takes a lot of time. So motivated by that, the same author designed a JIT framework that um, implements a C compiler as in, inside the JIT framework and so that that can um, compile the C code into a IR without executing another C compiler process that's um, made bottleneck of the MJIT. And so the C or like a JIT compilation will be faster if you use this framework. Although we still don't have any um, actual um, integration of MIR to the uh, MRR, MR, sorry, CLB or MRI. Uh, by the way, I call CLB as MRI in this um, presentation because um, uh, like you use people, I, I believe, use uh, MRI to call uh, CLB, unlike Japanese people calling CLB as CLB. But anyway, so um, there's no working implementation for uh, CLB uh, JIT compiler using MRI, uh, MRI yet, but um, 
they, the author plans to work on that layer, so we may see that layer. And the characteristics that was that is shared, uh, or like, uh, the ma main characteristics of this uh, JIT framework is uh, like if you use a uh, MIR, uh, sorry, LLVM, you can inline C functions without the C compiler if you just link the library to the uh, C interpreter. Um, if you do, do that, and so um, it doesn't need to invoke another process and merge that. Like currently, because MJIT executes a, a JIT compiler or like a JIT compiles a method by a C compiler process. It sometimes has trouble by uh, using the different processes, like because for let's say you we execute a method called uh, process of weight all that somehow interacts with the C compiler processes executed by MJIT. So it has been problematic to deal with that by locking and also uh, that probably still has some locking issues. So uh, as long as we go with the MJIT architecture we may see, uh, possibly see the uh, deadlock bugs by waiting for the process management and, and so on. So uh, we, I also want to explain the uh, layers of the concerns. Um, so as I said, MIR is the framework, so that might sit under the uh, JIT current JIT compiler that generates C code, but at the same time, uh, you could also directly generate the mirrored IR instead of directly, oh sorry, the generating the C compiler, sorry, sorry, C code like uh, current MJIT. But um, YJIT on the other hand, implements everything by itself. So YJIT in generates the x86 assembly, assembly code directly and assembles that by the, itself. So it's a first documentation, unlike the um, current, so, uh, so to say, the uh, combination of MIR and MJIT. But um, today's theme is about uh, focus is about image because um, as of today, we the latest implemented latest version of Ruby is Ruby 3.0, and so if you want to optimize the uh, production performance by the already released Ruby versions, you have to use Ruby 3, and that only has image today. So tuning JIT performance for Rails. So this is a, a graph shared by Shopify team for showing how YJIT is performing better than MJIT. And as you can see, uh, I'm not talking about difference between the performance difference between MJIT and uh, YJIT here, but the point I wanted to, uh, the thing I wanted to point out is uh, the this graph shows that MJIT is learning slower than the no JIT performance um, even after we did all the improvements. But um, the thing is, uh, there are some tricks to uh, improve the performance uh, like a better than the no JIT performance. So that's the thing I'm talking about uh, in this section. And uh, this is the comparison between different Ruby versions, not the difference between no JIT and JIT. So it, it might be confusing this um, page, but uh, the, what the thing I wanted to say is in Ruby 3.0, you can improve the performance more than the uh, virtual machine performance, but you have to use uh, Ruby 3 or later because Ruby 2.6 and 2.7 are have some challenges to uh, reach that performance. So uh, first of all, you have to use Ruby 3, and then uh, if you use Ruby 3, you also need to think about how to tune the um, performance to uh, see the peak performance. So that's going, what I'm going to talk about from this uh, slide. So the key ideas are, uh, first of all, you have to uh, think about which version to use, obviously, because uh, you, as, I, as you already saw in the previous slide, uh, Ruby 2 is slow, like a JIT of the Ruby 2 is slow. And also I need to talk about point, GC Compact and Raptor, and uh, some other options and the uh, need to think about the warm-up. So first of all, uh, some versions are slow. So uh, that's, because I introduced some optimization in Ruby 3.0, which is improving the cache efficiency of the uh, generated code. So if you use Ruby 2, um, you might see some code duplication between different methods. That will mean that the code locality is bad, and so CPU cannot efficiently cache your uh, native compiled methods. So um, we already know that if you use Ruby 2, 
uh, you cannot optimize every application by JIT compiler. But um, still, uh, even if you use V3, uh, there are some bugs or like uh, issues that I need to fix in the future. Uh, so even if you use Ruby 3, you might be, not be able to see the peak performance. So anyway, uh, one obvious known issue is um, Ruby 3.0.1 is known to be broken. Like uh, the C code generates, uh, so, sorry, MG generates a C code that cannot be compiled. <laughs> so obviously that doesn't work. And Ruby 3.0.0 is the main version I'm using for benchmarks. So if you want to see the performance I, you, I, I'm seeing, you might be able to. You might want to try that first. And Ruby 3.0.2 it fixed the issue in the Ruby 3.0.1, but still for fixing some uh, issues introducing 3.0.1, I might have some uh, did some done some wrong things there. So uh, you might not be able to see the same performance between 3.0.0 and 3.0.2. So um, that's one tip for you. And even if you use a master after uh, the Ruby 3.0 or like a 3.1, uh, you might still see some dif difference. So uh, just to be clear, uh, what I'm showing here is a 3.0.0's performance, just in case. And uh, next thing is a trace point GC compact reactor. So first of all, um, GC compact moves some uh, pointers of the uh, used by uh, Ruby interpreter. So uh, when MGIT in embeds some C pointer into the native code directly, um, the same code cannot be used. So the way we fix the issue is uh, once MGC compact is used, we simply disable all the code execute compiled by MGIT. So, um, and the other thing is a trace point. So since Ruby 3. Point, sorry, Ruby 2.6 or something, TracePoint has got optimization to um, just re rewrite every single instruction of the virtual machine once the uh, TracePoint is enabled. So uh, because it's the instruction that which the MGT is compiling from is recompiled or like, uh, sorry, uh, altered by TracePoint, we cannot use the same JTED code once the TracePoint is enabled. So um, Ruby 3.1 introduced a feature that shows JIT cancel on the JIT verbose one logs when it actually happens to clarify that it's no longer running the um, JIT code. However, um, Zywerk, uh, which is the uh, Rails 6 uh, default autoloader, uses TracePoint. So <laughs> if you already switch to uh, TracePoint, or sorry, that Zywerk, you cannot um, use the MJ to be did. So to fix that, um, in Ruby 3.1, we introduced the support of TracePoint class events. That is the only event used by Zyberg. So um, Ruby, if you use Ruby 3.1, um, you could see some performance improvement by uh, running the uh, JIT compiler with the uh, reciprocation enabling Zyberg. But if you already use Zyberg and Ruby 3.0, you might not be able to see the peak performance because simply the JIT code will be disabled once Zyberg is called. And the last thing is uh, MGIT has some performance issues when you have reactors. Uh, we are still investigating, but um, as long as you create a one reactor, uh, by the way, one other performance tip is that um, when you enable reactor, that the Ruby interpreter switch to, switches to the multi-reactor mode, which is uh, for some reasons, uh, it becomes slower than not, not using reactors. So um, just making it a little bit slower is a known issue by enabling reactor, but at the same time, uh, if you enable reactor, MGIT, the generated, uh, code generated by MGIT will be significantly slower if you enable reactor, or like a, maybe, maybe by going to the multi reactor mode. Uh, we are working on that issue, but for now, you may not be able to see the peak performance if you are trying the code with a reactor. Uh, the key thing, uh, I think the main important thing is uh, you have to change the JIT max cache option for Ruby 3.0. So the default value of JIT max cache is 100 in Ruby 3.0, but um, in uh, actual real world REST applications, oftentimes you have more than 100 methods. 
like uh, in the Rails bench, which is very simple scaffold application, that has a thousand methods or like a thousand and a few uh, tens of methods. So uh, it, if it comes when it comes to the real world application, I guess that could be uh, thousands of methods. So you have to uh, change the JITMAX cache to more than that. Like uh, uh, I use ten thousand so that that we make sure everything is uh, compiled. So um, by the reason why we we did release the Ruby three point zero with one hundred method is because um, we believe that the the number of methods compiled by JIT compiler should be small because um, that we not if you compile many methods that we not fitting the CPU cache which is very small. However, the thing that we turned out that uh, actually we should compile everything to uh, improve the CPU cache efficiency, probably because if you compile everything, that will fit in the very um, small, uh, very close locations. So uh, the code will be more pre predictable by, uh, sorry, than going to back to a virtual machine to uh, JIT uh, again and again. So that's the um, situation you need to avoid for uh, seeing the peak performance of MG. So which also means that you need to wait for uh, compiling all the methods. Um, so uh, also to uh, make sure you compile everything, you probably need to use the, the dash dash jit dash was one option to see the logs. Like uh, jit was one option shows the list of methods that are being compiled and finished compiled. And so um, you can see the progress of the JIT compiler or the current status. And uh, yeah, another important thing is you need to wait until everything is compiled, which is not actually a good thing for actual real world applications. But when it comes to web applications, I believe that the, there could be some situations where you can wait for a long time because once you deploy something, let's say on Thursday, you can then you let's say you don't deploy on Fridays or weekends, uh, you will see some the you need to use the same revision for a few days. And then if the warm-up takes only a few minutes, uh, the that will be ignorable compared to the uh, performance of over the weekend for a days or something more longer. So um, you need to check if the everything is compiled by uh, also by the JIT purpose one option that you log the whether your methods are already finished compiled or not. Like uh, when you pass the dash dash JIT verbals one option, uh, you will continuously see the logs generated by the JIT compiler. But once it stops, that might be the sign that uh, everything is compiled. So at least you have to see the stop of the JIT verbals one log to see the peak performance. Uh, also, by the way, uh, one, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, um, when a C compiler is running, the interpreter becomes slower. So um, there are more things I need to ex explain in this next section. But um, one problem is that when the C compiler is running, that will use some resources on your machine. And also, it somehow interacts with the uh, Ruby method by locking uh, the, at least some, some methods like uh, waiting for processes and uh, some method cache, uh, well, sorry, not method cache, but, but um, some processes need to acquire lock and that might interact with MJIT. So when a C compiler is running, that will be uh, somewhat slower. So if you measure performance of MJIT while some C compiler is running, uh, that will be almost guaranteed to be slower. So if you want to see the peak performance, you have to be careful about these. It's obviously, um, difficult or like a time consuming or bo may, might bother you, but um, it's what it is. Uh, we, of course, uh, think about how to improve the situation, but um, probably we probably need to change the MJIT architecture to fix this issue. So as long as you're trying MJIT, this is what you need to be careful about. So the next section is about the warming up MRJIT. Um, so uh, by MRIJIT, by the way, I'm talking about MJIT in this uh, presentation, uh, in the, at least in the later sections. Um, so the first thing I need to introduce is a dash dash JIT min calls option. So this is a minimum number of calls you need to achieve to uh, make sure your method is recognized by a JIT compiler. So the default is default of JIT min call is uh, 10,000 since the Ruby 3.7. So if you use three, to Ruby 2.7 or newer, 
you have to call the same method 10,000 times to uh, let the JIT compiler compile that your method. So if your benchmark doesn't run the method uh, 10,000 times, it doesn't make sense as a uh, benchmark for the MJIT. And as I said before, uh, when a C compiler is running, it's going to be slower. So uh, you probably want to wait until the, your benchmark code is called uh, 10,000 times to see the peak performance. And another thing to explain is the uh, lifetime of the JIT code. So MJIT has some tricks to uh, tweak or like uh, take care of the optimizations for each individual method. So at first, MJIT tries to um, implement or sorry, uh, do all the optimization that are possible. So um, for let's say inline this method and inline this instance variable access, inline this constant and so on. So these kind of things are um, just executed because um, MJIT is not really utilizing or sorry, generating the uh, profiling code first to see the uh, information that cannot be obtained from virtual machine. So the trick is uh, it just executes everything or like uh, optimize everything first. And when the optimized code is executed at first, uh, that will see if the optimized optimization is valid or not. Like if the inlining should not be happening in that line, we just invalidate the code and uh, that will be recompiled after disabling the optimization for that method. So the stage is like, the first stage is um, the full optimizations are applied. And then once it's recompiled, uh, only a partial optimization will be applied for the same method. And finally, we will see the compacted method, uh, which uh, happens after everything is compiled. That will be explained also later. So JIT compile is recompile is a trick that is executed when JIT compiler finds that the method is uh, shouldn't apply the optimization that was already applied in the previous compilation. So if you pass the JIT variables one option, you can see the MJIT recompile, sorry, JIT recompile log to that indicates that uh, the method will be discarded first and then recompile later, disabling that optimization. And um, so because of that, uh, once you see the JIT recompile log, uh, the method will not be executed by your interpreter anymore. So you should not see the JIT recompile log at the end of your logs if you want to see the measure, uh, sorry, peak performance of the MJIT. And just for as a reference, th these five fields are the optimization switches for the MJIT. So the first one is a IVR cache, which is an instance variable cache. So um, is, if this is false or like a, by the way, all of these five optimizations, so or sorry, five fields are set to false by default and set to true when uh, the optimization is disabled. So when this the IVR cache disable IVR cache is true, uh, that will not inline the instance variable uh, for the fast pass. So um, I don't go into the details of the instance variable optimization, but that means that instance variable access will be uh, less optimized. And the next thing is also about the instance variable cache. So EXIVAR means that uh, it's for some special classes like hash and some other base classes because um, uh, usual objects store the instance variable inside the object uh, um, memory or like inside the object heap um, that can use the same code across those kind of the same uh, instance variable, sorry, sorry, objects. But when it comes to uh, some special classes like hash, it needs to look up the uh, global symbol table to see the uh, compare the hash, hash object to another table for looking at the instance variable. So it uses a different um, uh, switch. And the next thing is a send cache, which is for, used for uh, caching some, uh, sorry, inlining some implementation for coding methods, Ruby methods, and sometimes for C methods as well. And inlining is obviously for method inlining. MJIT performance and method inlining for a few known methods that can be in, in line, known to be inline well. So those are relying on this flag. And the last thing is a const cache. Uh, when this flag is still uh, disabled, sorry, when this flag is still false, uh, MJIT tries to uh, inline some constant. 
And the JIT compaction is a technique that is used after every method is compiled one, at least once. So once, um, like, let's say you have 4,000 methods, once the 4,000 methods are compiled at least once, uh, images tries to compact the location or like a location of the code into a very compact location. And that will deduplicate the methods or like, a, sorry, functions between the different methods. So the code size will be much smaller and that will be good for CPU cache efficiency. So, and also this will show some log like JIT compaction. So if you have, to, if you want to see the peak performance, you need to see JIT compaction at the end of your JIT variables one logs. Finally, I'll talk about the future of the MRJ. So uh, you might ask, why do we have multiple JIT compilers? And the answer is like, we, we are not com competing with each other. But like YGIT team sometimes um, discusses of ideas that are useful for MJIT. And I, I as a MJIT uh, maintainer, proposes a way to share some optimizations implemented in MJIT with the YGIT as well. And also patch, uh, send some uh, pre-requests in the past. And um, so uh, we are just basically just experimenting at this stage. But um, one idea which uh, Matt previously proposed is a multi tier did. Like um, when there is a lightweight JIT compiler and a heavyweight JIT compiler, the idea is like uh, you execute lightweight JIT compiler a lot of times for early stages. And when there are more hot methods or like a particularly hot methods, you execute a heavyweight JIT compiler to optimize further than the lightweight JIT. But the thing is currently uh, YJIT is faster than MJIT. So it doesn't make sense as a uh, last tier JIT compiler using MJIT as a tier JIT compiler as of now. So um, at least MJIT has to be faster than YJIT to be used as a last tier JIT compiler. So uh, currently, probably you might want to just use YJIT as a single tier compiler. And also another problem is MJIT uses deal open to load the um, native code into memory. So we don't have any control over which location we are going to use for locating the um, JIT code. So it might be hard to efficiently locate these code together. So we have some problems to use that as a last, last tier JIT compiler. So I think in the short term, we probably want to use YJIT as a single tier compiler in many of the workloads. Um, however, um, there's some limitation in YJIT as well, because um, unlike MJIT, um, it cannot compile or like a deal with the C methods because um, it's simply not using C compiler. So um, if you want to optimize or like uh, optimize C methods and Ruby methods together, you have to be able to recognize the uh, C based uh, functions. So uh, YJIT can do that, uh, sorry, MJIT can do that, but YJIT cannot do that for now. Uh, a way to solve it without relying on a C compiler, which is also <laughs> another challenge is um, uh, you might be able to try mirror as the uh, way to fix it. And also another way could be uh, rewriting C methods to Ruby where possible. Like we already do that uh, in the past, but sometimes it's hard to uh, maintain the interpreted performance if you write rewrite C with Ruby. So it could be a challenge. So those two are the options we could explore for fixing those problems. The conclusion is that um, I wanted to show that there is a way to speed up Rails with MJIT, although you might see many benchmarks that show MJIT actually makes the Rails bench slower, but you need to be careful about actually a lot of things to uh, make the MJIT uh, work faster than the interpreter. And finally, we are shifting, I think, towards the YJIT for better performance because YJIT already achieved a um, first faster performance than MJIT and also um, it has a lot of more developers, and so uh, that could be a better way to achieve a better performance. That's it. Thank you for listening to my talk.